Mullins, the most successful festival combination of all time. Footpad was a runaway winner of last year's Arkle. Frodon has a fine record at Cheltenham, but not necessarily at the festival. He is ridden by Bryony Frost, who seeks her second festival success. Paul Nichols won yesterday's RSA chase with top of the game. Seven is Mona Lee for Henry de Bromhead. Rachel Blackmore won on Aplutar on Tuesday, looking for a second win of the week. Mona Lee, who ran a fine race at the festival last year. Number eight is Roads to Respect. Sean Flanagan takes the ride for multiple Cheltenham Festival winning trainer Noel Mead. Seconds to Gold Cup contender. To Bells Hill in the Irish Gold Cup. And number 10 is Tear 4, who ran such a fine race in last year's JLT. Daryl Jacob for Nicky Henderson. The storyteller bids to give Gordon Elliott a fourth win at this year's festival and is the mount of Davy Russell. And the final horse to go to post. And perhaps we should herald him the most because this is under so. Four festivals, a win, second, win, second. His third appearance in this race and one of the very best steeplechases in training for many seasons. But overlooked by Ruby Walsh, he is the mount of Paul Townend, the man who won the Arkle on Duc de Genièvre. And we can pick up with Underso Chris Dixon and Don McLean because this is a horse who adds much luster to this race. He's perhaps one of the most unsung heroes, I think, in the sport because there always seems to be a sexier horse around, but there aren't too many with his CV and his list of achievements. No, and he's tremendously consistent to go along with the high quality of performance that he puts in on such a regular basis so can't really knock him 11 years of age but ran up there with as good a figures as he's ever run when he was second to Altior uh, when we last saw him he's obviously had just a light campaign so he's a fresh horse he's had a few months off since that one run and as you say he comes to life at the festival as well he so often has run well here in the past so he's certainly a contender a very, very difficult horse for Ruby Walsh to get off, even when he has the seven-year-old, lightly raised footpad to ride. Yeah, no, it must have been a very tough decision for him, Nick. Um, but look, I, I suppose the footpad has the better chance. On, on he's the he's the he's the young, improving horse. He's the one like what he did in, in all last year as a novice chaser. He, I think he won four Grade Ones, um, including the Arkle here. So he's the, he's the up-and-coming horse. His two runs this year have been a bit, bit, bit disappointing. He fell in his first run when he struck into himself at Nace, and then last time he essentially had his race won when simply Ned came and just beat him on the run-in. Um, he probably lack of a recent run told that day, and he came, he came home with an overreach that day as well. So look, he's he's a talented horse. As you say, he's likely raised. He's a young horse, stepping up from two to two and a half miles or two miles five. That's interesting. He, he has won a pre Alain de Bray in France over two miles three and a half, and he finished third behind. You know what I mean, Harry and Nicholas Canyon in the Punchestown, the stairs hurdle there. So he does have stamina, um, but it's it, it's it, it's still a new thing for him. I think going two and a half miles at this pace in this grade. Bryony Frost's big ride this week is Frodon, <laughs> and. That, that tells you what she thinks of Frodon. And Paul Nichols was considering running this horse in the Gold Cup after he'd beaten Gold Cup contender Elegant Escape in the Cotswold Chase. But I think this is the more sensible route for, for Frodon, Chris, because it is a race that he can conceivably win. But can he put a festival performance up there to match some of his brilliant handicap efforts? That's uh, something you can level against him. He's yet to win in Grade 1 company, not from five at this level. But he has been an improved performer this season. He loves this track. He's four from six on the new course here at Cheltenham. He jumps and he travels really well, so he'll give himself a chance. He was fifth last year, but I think he is an improved model this time around. A Mona Lee, the maroon, the yellow stars, it's very hard to conceive of him not running a big race. Yeah, like that's exactly right. Like, like he's, he's such a high-class horse. I think he's an underrated horse as well. Like He, he, he did have the option of the Gold Cup. Henry de Bram had hummed and hawed for quite a long time and eventually obviously decided on the Ryanair. Uh, you can argue that his best, he's, like, he's, he's finished second in an Albert Bartlett hurdle here over three miles. He finished second to presenting Percy last year in the RSA chase over three miles. So he, it, it's not that he doesn't stay three miles. It's just that maybe back over two and a half and ridden aggressively as he was last time by Rachel Blackmore when they won the Red Mills chase at Goran Park. That was a really good run. And you just think over two and a half miles or two miles five, she can be as aggressive on him as she likes. And this will be an aggressively run race. Frodon lining up toward the inside. A whole bank of... The Jigginstown owned horses there. Balco de Flo, Road to Respect, Sub Lieutenant. Looks like they're all going to be handy with Mona Lee. Underso will tank off in front. Aso won't be too far away. And look where Ruby Walsh is positioning himself. Chile on footpad. Will he, in this Ryanair, have the last laugh on this lightly raced favourite and winner of the Arkle last year? We will find out very shortly in what is a compelling edition of this race. Perhaps the best running of it yet. Some of the best horses in training. 
and it'll be a, a thrilling spectacle. Here we go then, nearly ready as they're coming out onto the course. Perhaps time for a final word from Chris Dixon. Well, you mentioned that strong pace. There's a couple of horses that that is likely to suit. Footpad, who really excelled under the circumstances at the festival last year, and Road to Respect as well, who I doubt will have much to do with the early tempo, but he's got festival form, he's a strong stayer, and uh, a good gallop would suit him. Just taking a little while to get out onto the course here. It'll be very interesting to see whether Underso is able to establish a dominant lead here or whether Paul Tannen will try and take him back off a contested pace in order to conserve his stamina at this distance. Coming forward for the Ryanair of 2019, and Simon Holt is your commentator. Being led forward by Frodon on the inside. Oh, a road to respect just broke into a canter there. Will he let them go? He does so. They're off and racing in the Ryanair. Frodon and Bryony Frost on the inside of Road to Respect. Sub left tenant close up with Mona Lee as they jump fence number one and they're all safely over. A reminder, a couple of reminders for sub left tenant there who goes up to try and join Frodon as they approach the second fence. Frodon on the inside of sub left tenant. Mona Lee and then out wide Road to Respect in the white cap. Back on the inside the grey tier four followed by Aso. And they are followed uh, out very wide by Balco de Flo in the maroon cap. Under so does, has not gone tearing off today and is being ridden with a bit of restraint back in the field alongside stable mate Footpad. And then Coney Island towards the back as they swing the bottom left hand turn. Charbel is second last and the storyteller is the back marker. This Cheltenham course specialist Frodon on the inside of Sub Lieutenant. Three lengths to Mona Lee in third. Road to respect fourth on the outside. Aso round the inner in the blue and white jacket. Followed by Balco de Flo. Then under So out wide of the grey tier four. Foot pad further back. Charbel's on the inside. Coney Island and the storyteller still out the back as they jump the next and Frodon, a typically good jump by the leader there, less good was the storyteller in the rear who hit that one fairly hard, Frodon approaching the next, this is fence number 5 of 17, Frodon over, Palm in second place sub-lieutenant Sharbel was clumsy there Frodon, sub-lieutenant, three lengths to Mona Lee. Aso on the inside, out wider, road to respect, followed wider still by Balco de Flo. Under so into about sixth place at this stage, followed by Tier 4 and Footpad, and then Sharble, Coney Island, and the storyteller as they jump the next, and now on to the fence in front of the stands. The one will be the last fence in a circuit's time, and Frodon comes in to take it. Frodon over accurately alongside sub-lieutenant. Three lengths to Aso, Mona Lee, out wide then Road to Respect. A length and a half to Balco de Flo and under so behind those in the light blue jacket on his fifth festival appearance. Followed by Tier 4, last year's Arkel winner, footpad on the outside, then Charbel, and then Coney Island and the Storyteller. And the field will be covered by about 10 or 12 lengths as they swing now into the back straight. Frodon with a fractional advantage over sub-lieutenant. Mona Lee close up, so to Aso, Road to Respect and Balco de Flo taking closer order on the outside, jumping the first down the back. Another blunder from Charbel and the storyteller not so good either. On now to the water jump. Frodon and sub-lieutenant who's pushed along. Mona Lee is third at the water. Frodon, sub-lieutenant. Mona Lee, then Road to Respect. On the outside then Balco de Flo, followed by Ace so, no move yet from footpad or tear four under so on the inside over this open ditch. Further back, the storyteller and then Charbel and Coney Island, who's now being driven along. On to the next. This is a plain fence. Frodon on the inside. Took it well again. Followed by sub lieutenant right there with him, but being aggressively ridden now in second place sub-lieutenant they're followed by Mona Lee going well Aso round the inside road to respect under so creeping up the inside at this open ditch oh a brilliant jump from Frodon there he really came up out of Brian's hands at that one Frodon a brilliant jumper from in second place sub-lieutenant Aso then on the outside road to respect Balco de Flo under so on the inside at the next this is five out Frodon over in front Charbel his jumping letting him down 
down now trails the field as they round the top turn and at the top of the hill with four fences left to jump in the Ryanair and it's still Frodon but Aso for company followed by Mona Lee, Rota Respect, Frodon and Aso one and two as they start on now down the hill. Frodon from Aso, Rota Respect on the outside last year's gold cut fourth. Mona Lee is right there. So too under so on the inside in that light blue jacket. Footpad is stalking them as they head down to the third last. Frodon and Aso still out in front. Frodon, Aso not slightly on landing. Uh, then ridden now road to respect. Mona Lee under so creeping round the inside. Footpad is following him and then behind these races Balco de Flo and Coney Island. They swing the final turn and it's still Frodon. Frodon by a length. Under so scampering round the inside with a challenge. Then Aso, Mona Lee. Footpad is getting closer in the green jacket. And then out wide road to respect. Here's the second last. Frodon and Aso. Frodon on the far side. Aso coming back. Under so not too good there. Out wide road to respect is battling on well. They race on towards the final fence. And Frodon and Aso are battling it out still. Aso on the near side. Frodon on the far side. Chased hard by road to respect. And then Mona Lee up the hill. Frodon on the far side. He's pulling out more from Aso. Then back in third road to respect is Frodon and Rani Frost. A match made in racing heaven. He's going to see it out to win again at Cheltenham. And he wins the Ryanair. What an improved horse. A brilliant jumper. Aso and road to respect running great races. And back in fourth, Mona Lee. Oh, poetry in the Ryanair. Story of the festival so far, and you're unlikely to beat it. One of the greatest partnerships in the sport at the moment. Frodon, a horse who wears his heart on his sleeve, and Brani Frost, who does likewise, have prevailed in the Ryanair. They measured every fence perfectly. A performance of sublime rhythm in the Ryanair, and they have won. All the cards were still to be played as they turned for home. Ruby Walsh. The first man to congratulate Brownie Frost and Frodon, he surely, as the most successful festival winning jockey of all time, will appreciate the deep significance of this moment as Brownie Frost, the person who has lit up this sport with her enthusiasm and her brilliant talent the last two seasons, has ridden a winner of one of the festival's most important prizes and on a horse it is impossible not to love. Not just for her to love, but for all of us. Because he gives everything, he jumps beautifully, and today he has added his grade one to his litany of past triumphs. How he loves Cheltenham, and how Cheltenham loves him, and the rider aboard. Well, well, well. Frodon has done it. And rhythm, the key word, Lucky, because that's what he got into, but he's also exceptionally tough. He was headed, wasn't he, by ASO, and kind of looking and thinking, ASO's going to win it, and didn't see that one coming, but fantastic stuff from Frodo. It's another winner, another Ryanair for Paul Nichols. How he'll have enjoyed that. Here he is with Lydia. He's made history at the festival many times, but he'll be very, very okay. proud of what Frodon has achieved there in the Ryanair. I had to give yeah. you a minute to collect yeah, yourself, because that was amazing. That was awesome. Um, lost my voice a bit. Um, <laughs> hasn't been easy to get him right and I knew he had to be 120% middle of last week me and Clifford felt we were a gallop short so we um, took him to wing count on Friday let him have a mile and a half with Pictori just put the finishing touches to him that was just awesome from an early stage you could see that Bryony got him in a beautiful yeah. rhythm I just said there's no point getting him behind make or just keep saving a fraction and use that kick just once from the back of the last and that was brilliant and they're an amazing partnership together yeah. they've got trust in each other haven't they yeah and he's massively improved like a lot of the young horses this year and we worked hard to get him at his very best today and brilliant brilliant team ever and you had the choice to make between the gold cup or here yeah I didn't it wasn't difficult in the end with the ground you know and it, the good thing is to win that race you need something that stays three miles and he got the three and that was perfect next year we might look at something different <laughs> okay and, and what do you make about this this historical moment with Bryony uh, Frost a uh, female jockey winning a grade one here at the Cheltenham uh, well, she Festival she deserves it you know everyone in the team deserves it and most of all the horse deserves it he's just the most amazing horse you'd ever want to train he's so willing isn't yeah. he and oh he's just awesome he's not very big and that is a very very special day congratulations thank you Paul Nichols in the festival big time again with a brace of grade one winners this week he might not be done yet what a race ASO has run for Charlie Deutsch and Venetia Williams third in the race two seasons ago second this time he's made Frodon pull out all the stops let's not forget his part in this
He's run a hell of a race, Nick, um, and he, he travelled really well for Charlie Deutsch. As you say, he's back here. He wasn't. He wasn't. He didn't put up the performance last time at Ascot, but back at Cheltenham, which a track of which he goes so well, we know that he's run, run a hell of a race in the field. The one thing the connections of this horse Frodon are not is shy and retiring. Bryony Frost. A brilliant description of how these horses run for her has really captivated a whole new audience to the sport. And Paul Nichols, he'll let you know when he's enjoying it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's great to see, isn't it? And the the massive attribute that Bryony Frost seems to have is that horses run for her. And more importantly, in this game, they jump for her. And they just get into such a good rhythm and she lets them slide along inside their comfort zone. And they rarely make many mistakes. And the big successes that she's had in some of these competitive races, it's largely been down to the accurate, slick jumping of her mounts, and she just gets them into such a good rhythm. But what a tough horse as well, because they, they tried to put the spoilers on him. There was sub-lieutenant who was always niggled along to hold his position. He wasn't comfortable going the sort of gallop that Frodon was cruising along at, but he was always just there, putting a bit of mental pressure on Frodon. But his jumping was so fast that it meant that he was able to maintain that solid gallop. And horses that stay this trip really well have filled the frame out here. Frodon has beaten Aso and Road to Respect, who had form over three miles. And horses with speed who were played late, horses like uh, the footpad and 